Hello, my name is George Hewn. Project Portfolio Management is about evaluating and prioritizing your projects and then selecting an optimal portfolio that maximizes value to your firm while not exceeding your risk tolerance. Each one of these steps, evaluating, prioritizing, and optimizing, has uncertainty associated with the inputs. By uncertainty, I'm referring to the estimates around business attributes such as net present value, ROI, cost, number of resources required, time to market, risks, and so forth. All of these types of business attributes have uncertainty associated with the estimates that we make. However, most project portfolio models are incapable of handling this uncertainty and therefore yield skewed and unrealistic project valuation and do not serve as good foundations for making project portfolio selections. Take, for example, a typical spreadsheet type of project portfolio that has a list of projects with single values assigned to the various attributes. When these projects are scored, they also yield a single value, and then when the portfolio is valued, it becomes a single sum of the different value scores. So, as you can see here, even though we know that there's uncertainty in virtually all the numbers that were used, because the system can't handle it, you end up with single values that have no context for the actual probability of achieving that value. Different value estimates for the attributes would put the value estimate at different places, but you'd have no way of knowing which one was the most likely value or the least likely value. So, the different attribute values would sum to different value scores, like one that is here, or here, or here. But unless you see the underlying distributions, you wouldn't know which one was the most likely value or the least likely value. Once you see the distribution based on the uncertainties, you would see that there is only a 5% chance that this portfolio will achieve this value and a 95% chance that it won't. So this portfolio is highly overvalued. Now if we go to the low one, we can see that there is a 95% chance that the actual value of this portfolio is higher than what has been estimated here. So this portfolio would be largely undervalued. So the key is to see the entire distribution of potential outcomes so that you can understand the probabilistic value of your project and portfolio value estimates. Without this understanding, you have no way of telling which of these values represents the most likely outcome or being able to improve your project management system. For example, if you completed a project that you had estimated would have this value, but ended up down here when you finished, you wouldn't be able to tell if this should have been expected if you did not have the probability distribution of the expected outcomes. If you had the distribution, you would have known the probability of each of these outcomes plus a whole lot more. So I'm going to show you how you can use a Monte Carlo simulation and project portfolio management to get a much more insightful and meaningful picture of your individual project's value and of your whole portfolio value. We're going to be using something called a Monte Carlo simulation. I know that many of you are already familiar with Monte Carlo simulations, but for those that aren't, Monte Carlo simulation methodology was named after Monte Carlo, Monaco, a city that is famous for its casinos and games of chance such as roulette wheels, dice, cards, and slot machines. Games of chance exhibit random behavior within the context of game equipment and rules. For example, a shuffled deck of cards will contain 52 cards, but the card order will be random. Monte Carlo simulations involve creating multiple random outcomes, usually based on probability distributions, and then statistically analyzing the results. This type of Monte Carlo simulation is widely used in predictive financial modeling. In evaluating project value and project portfolio value, what we're really interested in doing is determining the key metrics that we're going to use to evaluate each project and also assign the relative importance of each one of those metrics to our project selection decision. Unfortunately, when we're trying to determine the value of a project, we usually don't have very precise estimates for many of these attributes. For example, if we're trying to determine the cost of manufacturing of a new widget, there are a lot of factors which go into making that cost calculation, such as cost of raw materials, the cost of machinery, labor costs, fixed plant costs, and so forth. In each one of these factors, there is a range of uncertainty, and this makes it impossible to come up with an exact value that has any meaning. So, in order to better estimate the value for the attributes, you can assign a range of uncertainty for each one, and then metaphorically roll the dice a few thousand times to get a distribution of outcomes for the attributes. So, if we go back to our cost estimate again, we can see that if we only use a single value, 
we'll only end up with a single result. And if we use a few values, we'll get a few results, but we won't be able to see a real distribution pattern. But if we get a few thousand results, then we can see the distribution pattern. In this case, a nice normal distribution. So now, if we analyze this using a cumulative probability curve, as shown by the green line, we can get some really important insight into what this widget manufacturing is going to cost. Based on the model, we can see that there is a 10% chance that it is going to be less expensive than 56, and a 10% chance that it is going to be more expensive than 63, which tells us that there is an 80% probability that it is going to cost between 56 and 63, with the most likely value around 60, which is the median. Let's see how this translates into project portfolio management under uncertainty. First of all, in building project portfolio models, there are two areas where uncertainty can be introduced. First, as we discussed, uncertainty can be introduced in the project data itself. And second of all, uncertainty can be introduced in the model parameters, such as attribute weights. As you can see in this prioritizer form, which is used to set up the simulations, you can run Monte Carlo simulations that test each of these uncertainty types separately or combined. So let's take a look first at model uncertainty. When we open up the decision model form, we can see that each attribute has a weight associated with it and that the weight designates the relative influence on the project rankings in the portfolio. The higher the weight, the greater the influence. For example, an attribute with a weight of 2,000 has twice the influence as an attribute with a weight of 1,000. Trying to determine and agree upon a set of weights can be very difficult for a group of people, and oftentimes the discussions are not even impactful in that the differences in the weights wouldn't really change the overall project rankings. This can be seen by doing sensitivity testing, where you study the changes in project rankings by varying one attribute at a time, but that is very time-consuming and very complicated for large portfolios. What OPSI does is take this discussion from specific weights to just ranking the attributes in order of importance and then letting the Monte Carlo simulation vary the attribute weights in thousands of tests to give a distribution of value scores based on the outcomes of thousands of different models. It's kind of like doing a massive sensitivity test, but instead of just varying one attribute at a time, you're varying all of them at once. Next, let's look at a portfolio of projects to see how OPSI manages the uncertainty associated with the individual attributes in the project. We open up a project and we can see that each attribute is listed as well as the value assigned to that attribute. But notice next to each value there is an uncertainty number which represents a percentage of the single value assigned. The percentage is a plus minus value, so for example, a project that has a cost of 100 plus or minus 5 percent associated with it means that the range of uncertainty in that cost value is between 95 and 105. You can see that when we click on the distribution button at the top of the form, the distribution associated with the project appears. The cumulative distribution curve display lets you see where your 10 percent, 90 percent, and median lines are for each project so you can see what your expected outcomes are. After the project is over and you have the actual values, you can compare them with your estimates to see where you were close and where you could use some improvement. This form also includes the summary data from the cumulative percentage line, and we can also see the distribution as standard deviations by clicking on the button at the bottom. But having probability distributions for projects alone isn't enough. You need them for your portfolio selections, too. OPSI automatically runs Monte Carlo simulations whenever you run an optimization and lets you easily run your own Monte Carlo simulations on any portfolio that you select manually and save as a view. So, just like projects, you're not guessing at what the distribution around your portfolio value is. You know what it is based on the uncertainty in each individual project. That is, the Monte Carlo simulation randomly varies the outcome for each project in the portfolio just as if you had actually executed the portfolio thousands of times, to give you a full statistical analysis of the entire selected portfolio. You can then use these to compare different portfolios graphically to select the one that's right for your business. It's important to know that if you don't do it this way, and you use just single values, you really won't know what the actual value distribution is, and you could be working with numbers that you're very, very unlikely to achieve in actuality, and your project portfolio ranking could therefore be way, way off. 
Finally, remember that when you're dealing with uncertainty in project portfolios, that the uncertainty can be introduced in both the project data as well as in the decision modeling data. And, as you saw, OPSI handles both of them. If you're interested in using this approach in your project portfolio management program, then you should try OPSI. OPSI has been developed specifically to make it easy for you to run these analyses quickly and easily so that you can make the most informed decisions about your projects and portfolio values as possible. And you can try it for free simply by signing up at our website. I'm George Hune, and thanks for watching.